Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It may have sounded weird to Ian and Kyle, that's because I turned on the music halfway through, but what isn't weird is that you're all here to talk about video games on this here 7th of April, 2022. <laughs> sounds so bad. Do you have a voice filter on? It Do sounds I have a like... voice filter on? It's doing an echo like when you have the voice filter on, oh, and weird. then there's the music barely underneath. Yeah. It sucks. I it kind of sounds like bad noise cancellation. I wonder yeah, if... Is this it's still happening or no? Not anymore. I wonder if that's like a new Discord thing. Um, or like when I'm uh, voice meter, not Discord. Anyways, folks, episode uh, 66? 66. That's what my show notes say. Uh, we've got Ian. We've got Kyle. We've got games Hi. to talk about. We're going to jump right into it with... Um, who do I want to go to first? I'm going to go to Ian first. Hi, um, folks. I've had a long, long week in video games, and it's a little bit of a PTSD whiplash. Uh, let's just put it this way. Saturday, I finished Kingdom Hearts 2. Woo! Yay! But I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I got so excited. I was like, you know, Elise and Haluta were like, man, you only got like two hours left. You're here. This is the perfect safe spot. And I'm like, Perfect load up the game i start playing within about two minutes i hit a boss fight and then i spent three hours trying to beat that boss that end um, boss man it wasn't the end boss it was like it was well, the I first say boss the end, in the, the end, end area game, the end game yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it was it was crazy because like you know admittedly part of it was me not taking the game seriously and just ignoring some mechanics because i i didn't have to use them before um, part of it is me realizing that I wouldn't say I'm bad at video games, but I am okay at video games. Uh, so when there's some difficulty, it takes me a bit to ramp up to that. This fight was just a huge difficulty spike compared to everything before it. Um, and the final thing, which I didn't really realize until about halfway through the stream and then started to take seriously at the very end was that I was severely under leveled and not just under leveled, but there were... The way Kingdom Hearts works is that there are like literally like movement abilities as well as like skills and stuff that unlock as you are leveling up both in the main level and in your your forms. And basically there were a whole bunch of like really good abilities that I just had not unlocked yet. Mm -hmm. um, half of that was me just ignoring the forms and not leveling those up. But the other half of it was like I was level 40 and they like unlocked at like 45 and 65 and all this other stuff. So basically, I spent three hours just mashing my head against this fight. I, I don't know, Will. I felt like I was making progress towards the end of that. I know you watched the whole thing drunk. What, what did it feel <laughs> what like to you? What do you mean? You? I wasn't drunk. Um, yeah. When you're so drunk that we could tell just from your Twitch chat that you're drunk. <laughs> I remember all of that. And I distinctly remember thinking... When I was typing that, I was like, yeah, I'm sobering up. And like, no, guys, I'm good now. And I just clearly remember every sentence being like, I'm a bad typer to begin with, but I just wasn't reviewing it. So like everything was just awful. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, that music is stuck in my head of that boss it's fight. Good, it's good, though. Like the sw it's, it's swelling music. It's great. But it's just like, and, and also the bombshell that that, uh, that fight isn't in the original game. It's something they decided yes. to add. It, like, it's a cutscene in the original game. It's, <laughs> it's so a cutscene in the original. It's a very difficult boss fight, mandatory, that they added in Final Mix. And that's the version everybody was like saying, no, no, Final Mix is better. Play Final Mix, play Final Mix. And just realizing that, wait a minute, if I had played the original game, I would not have had to deal with this stupid boss fight. was <laughs> so infuriating. Yeah, I think um, that's, I think that is the funniest part. <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, yeah. It was just, I, I don't want to go too much into the details of the fight, but basically the difficulty spike was up to that point, you could pretty much just mash attack and be okay. And even in some of the more harder boss fights before this, you could you would be killed, but it was really more about like understanding, oh, the boss is doing this, so that means I have to touch this or I have to hit his leg. You know, it's maybe learning one or two attack patterns and that's it. This boss fight at the level I was at, uh, I kept saying this and I really stick to it. It was like a Soulsborne fight. Like basically <laughs> every hit was like 15% of my health minimum. There were combos where it was like a five or six hit combo. And if you didn't land the first guard, 
then you took 40% health off. And there was no way to stop it once the combo started. Ooh. Um, and so even popping health and doing magic and everything, it was basically in the state of, towards the end, I was blocking and guarding like really well, like 70% of the attacks. But those remaining 30% would end up killing me like two minutes into the fight because I would get into a spot where it's like, I'm out of heals, I'm at 40% health, I miss one guard, boom, I'm dead. Yeah. Um, so it was, it actually was very difficult. But uh, all good things come to an end. Even bad things come to an end, like Kingdom Hearts 2, because I just, I did like nine hours of grinding on Sunday oh and my Monday. God. Nine hours? <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Yeah. I went from level 40 to 65. And then I also specifically unlocked a bunch of abilities and stuff and equipped those. And I got some better gear because like literally Saturday night, I couldn't sleep because it was a combination of like depression because I really thought I was like, tonight's the night. I'm going to be done with this game. I don't have to play it anymore. And then at the end of the stream Saturday, I went, not only do I have to keep playing this game, but I need to grind off stream no. <laughs> just to be able to beat it now. And so I like literally was so depressed that I kept like rolling in the bed and waking up and being like, oh, Kingdom Hearts, oh, Kingdom Hearts. Like it was like so upsetting to me. <laughs> so I like buckled Jesus. down and just, I mean, if you play a game for three hours in a row, the same boss fight, it's going to be in your head regardless. And then immediately go to bed. Um, so Tuesday night, walk in there, leveled up. I beat the boss fight my second try because I was just like tanking hits. I barely was guarding or blocking anything. Like I was just, I don't want to say I was over leveled, but I was now at a more appropriate level totally. where the game, the game became like I could ignore half these mechanics. Um, yeah. And then I spent, what was it? What was it? Will like two and a half hours beating Kingdom Hearts, a lot of cutscenes and stuff. Yeah. It was just phase after phase of a boss fight. That were just like, I mean, <laughs> probably when it came yeah. out, it was great, but yeah. they were just like so poorly weird phases. And it was, and, and but just, like, just to be clear, you're not kidding. Like, literally, I was trying to follow and I thought it was a joke, but that final boss fight literally was like five or six phases. And yeah. you'd beat one phase and be like, we're done. And then phase two would come and you'd be like, okay. And then third phase would happen. And then literally like a five minute cut scene of everybody getting together and being like, we did it guys. Great job. It, Let's go home. It and wasn't then even phase like five kicks in and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> some of them weren't even fights. Like two of them were him. Uh, and I kept saying he looked like Arthas from the Lich King. Like he was just sitting on his with a spear yeah. sitting on his throne and you were just hitting him and it wasn't anything. And then it was like, no, why isn't he dying? And he's like, I should try magic. And you hit one magic and he just dies. I was like, what? Yeah. I hate boss fights where you're okay, hitting no. something and the health is at the bottom and it's just not killing them. It's like, yeah. Yeah. and then you did it again. And I was in my head, I'm like, Ian use magic. And then you just hit him again and he died. And I was like, is it not magic? Is that not the answer? There's all, these, there's all these hidden rules in Kingdom Hearts. And it just, it becomes this counterintuitive thing where literally you're sitting there. He's at one health, a sliver, and hitting him does nothing. And it's just like, well, I got to find out what magical mystery thing ends this boss fight yeah. in this particular way they want me to. Um, God, so but yeah, I, I, I'm glad I'm done with it. I think it was quite the journey overall. It's not quite done just because I do need to now commission a piece of art of myself dressed up as Sora kissing Dog Street. Uh, I'm still working that out, the details. <laughs> um, but just like, just I overall, I would say a pretty good experience in terms of like a, a show, a piece of content we made. What do you guys think? I think it was great. I think. Yeah, I I was only there for a couple episodes, so I didn't get the full impact. Maybe I'll go back and rewatch. Oh, I got <laughs> I'll skim the last episode because it sounds it sounds good. But the ones I was there for, it was it was pretty fantastic. I even donated. I think I donated like 25 bucks or something. So I yeah. Yeah, donated I most of the money that we raised. <laughs> Although I, drunk, I drunkenly donated seventy five dollars. Uh, and Karen was like, why did you do that? I was like, Karen, most of this money comes back to me anyways. She was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so i i think it was a great stream series i think it was awesome i think it was way too long for it to be a solo stream series like if we want to do another let's play like that i think either having I man i think either I, having two I, other people there to talk while you play or having two people to talk and comment and you can't hear them 
Like if you had <laughs> Kingdom Hearts experts watching you and talking about it, like that I think would have been funny, but I don't think for I every think, episode. Yeah, I'm not fully disagreeing with you, but I think with this series it worked really well because this was like this was like put a man in a cage and just yeah. start throwing things at him. And you don't want other people in the cage with him, you know? Yeah, that's why, like, I think separating the cage from the commentators would work. And also, I think this also worked because there were plenty of people in the chat uh, helping yes. you out with stuff. Yeah. Um, if this was, if there wasn't that chat component or we didn't have an expert in our chat, I think that is another, <laughs> like, sort of shout yeah. out for that. But, made a big uh, difference. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But um, I think at the end of the day, I'm ready to give an official subpixel rating for Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, dang. Um, I am... I'm going to be clear. I'm being fair about this. I am taking into consideration the time when Kingdom Hearts 2 was released, which I don't know. It was like mid-2000s. It's the 1800s. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not judging it by modern standards. Kingdom Hearts 2... I've thought about it, and this is the answer. Kingdom Hearts 2 is... It's an 8 out of 10. It's... For when it was released... It's got a lot of stuff it's in so it. It's so good. It's got a lot of like combat mechanics. I know modern gamers, some of the stuff is not clear, but there's a lot of mechanical depth in there. And like I've said before, if you're into that type of story, hell yeah, man. That's all for you. That's good. I'm not into it, but it definitely still has some BS and some of the Disney World suck. But honestly, yeah, it's, it's a good game. It's not for me, but it's a good game. I'm glad I finally played it and I never have to touch another Kingdom Hearts game ever again. Fingers crossed. Mickey's um, crossed until uh yeah Mickey's <laughs> crossed <laughs> till somebody till we set up a bad donation goal and we meet it immediately where I have to play Kingdom Hearts one or something. That, that's what I was gonna say. I, was, <laughs> I know. Um, extra life. Other than the Kingdom's heart hearts hearts other than the Kingdom Hearts plight. Uh Kingdom what else have you been hearts. playing? I um I want to talk a little bit more about Nebulous Fleet Command because I am now a strong advocate for this game. Uh, so quick recap, I've talked about this last week. It is basically a three-dimensional real-time strategy game. Uh, think about it in terms of Expanse or Homeworld, where essentially you are controlling a handful of frigates, corvettes, cruisers in a 3D space and doing space combat, but it has a very realistic layer on top of it where they've tried to make it make it like more sim than arcade so you're you're giving very specific move commands you're not just doing like the usual like right click means attack you're like deliberately saying fire this weapon this ammo at this target um so i i did something which is i'm still mostly playing ai matches because i don't feel comfortable enough going online not because i want to win online matches but i don't want to join an online match and be like the god-awful teammate that doesn't know what they're doing <laughs> and brings everybody down you know yeah. especially in a small community like this but um I did an I did an AI match and it was four v four, and each each person myself and the AI had basically let's say between two to four ships so let's say three ships each so that's twenty four ships on this map, and within like two minutes of the match starting it just became chaos, but like in a really cool interesting way because. You know, it's not just like, oh, the enemy is jamming me. It's like, oh, two of the enemies are jamming me in two different directions. And, oh, my God, that's a salvo of 50 missiles heading our direction. <laughs> and, you know, you're, like, trying to, like, radar lock. And I ended up doing really well in that because um, the ship that I picked, one of them was a, a heavy cruiser with a railgun, which has a very long distance. And as soon as I got in the match, that cruiser, I took him up to the top of the map. I turned off his radar and I turned down his uh, his comm signal. So he basically became like super stealth and he couldn't see anything. But all my other teammates were spotting ships while they were in combat and I was getting their spots. So basically, as long as my as long as my comm radar was was up and as long as th those ships were still up, they were spotting people for me. And I was just like taking down people like crazy. Nice but it's so cool how it worked like i just been doing like small like like 1v1 like three versus four ship type type duels but to see it just get chaotic in the match was really awesome um i do want to highlight one mechanic which i don't think i talked about last time which is that something this game does really well is like the ships don't have health bars it's not like in an rts when you start shooting at somebody and then you see like a big health bar and it starts whittling away or, you know, they have five units and they start losing it. Now they're down to three. Now they're down to two. 
it's it's all like component and module based even for yourself so like when you start to take damage like if they're shooting the right side of your ship and they happen to hit the radar module then the radar module on the right side of your ship will get knocked out and you'll lose radar on the right side of your ship Mm -hmm. until you repair it and there's a limited number of repairs like every time you repair something it loses a level of efficiency if something gets knocked out completely depending on your ship you have like three or four chances to like bring back a module from being completely destroyed but after those three or four chances you can't bring them back so it it ends up presenting these really cool opportunities like i had one of those fights where it was like it was a 4v4 it was 1v1 but four ships versus four ships and uh we got into some really early combat and i made a mistake and one of my ships just got chewed up and it got to a point where it had had no engine it couldn't fire anything and it had no radar and it lost its command center. And when it loses its command center, you can't give it any commands other than repair commands. So basically wow. my ship gets chewed up, becomes completely inactive and starts floating. And the other, the, uh, the other team was just like, okay, this ship's out of the fight. I'm going to keep going. And it goes. And I spend like six minutes keeping my other ships at bay and slowly drawing the other team into a trap and then repairing the one ship, getting it to a point where I could at least fire the weapons and pull the radar signals from the other ships. And then at the very end, like 25 minutes later, I did a pincer maneuver with this with the previously dead ship basically coming around an asteroid point blank, blowing some ships up. And it was like it was really cool. And the opposite end of that is really cool, because when you're shooting a ship, you don't know the health of the ship. You, you can see your hits are landing, but you really have to pay attention. Like like uh, in that brawl I was talking about, there was like, you know, 20 enemy ships flying around. And I'm like, OK, what do I prioritize? And towards the end of the fight, it's like, OK, I see that ship. There's no engine on. It's not moving. And there's actually little lifeboats coming off of it. Mm-hmm. It's dead in the water. It's done. It's done. So like they're literally abandoning ship. That one has its engines on, but I've been watching it for a minute and it's not firing. It's not shooting at anything. It must be out of ammo. Meanwhile, that guy is shooting, but its engines are down. Okay, I'll I'll prioritize the guy that is shooting. You know, you're like, you literally have to look at the ship and be like, what status are you in? Because it's very rare that the ship goes like completely dark or completely explodes. Most of the time you have to literally judge it. And man, that's really cool in a game, isn't it? Like, man, I just, I love that. That's, that's, that's that RTS revolution that I feel like we've been missing. Um, because I was trying to think, I don't know if you guys can think of any, I mean, there aren't really like any like triple A well-received RTSs lately. I, I guess Age of Empires, what was it, four yeah, it was that more came the out? Same, though. Yeah, it's, so it's interesting to see this indie game come out of nowhere and do something cool. Um, I know we're running late on time and I didn't plan on talking about this last game, but I feel like I have to. Uh Air Conflicts Vietnam, it's a PlayStation 4 game. It was on PlayStation Now, so I just downloaded it and played it like a couple missions today. It's just a very, very arcadey air shooter, but I was like, okay, sure, I'll, I'll fly planes around and shoot at things. Um, literally within the first mission, you are committing war crimes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> just like Vietnam. It's- yeah, like I was I wanted this. I'm like, look, I know what this is. This is basically an arcade game for a home console. It's going to be like, I don't want to say glorified violence, but it's going to be like, blow, blow it up. Cool. America. But literally the first mission is just like there's NVA in this Hamlet. Destroy the whole Hamlet. <laughs> and so you're like mission is just blow up all the buildings in this village. And you're just like, what? Wow. And I know it's crazy. And then like two missions later, they're like, they keep hiding in the trees. They keep, I'm sorry, this is, this is real. They're like, they keep hiding in the trees. Fly the plane low and deploy Agent Orange. (laughs) Oh my God. Like literally. No. And I'm just like, oh my God. Okay. But I, I, I do have to give the game a little bit of credit. I started, it's not doing it well, but I started to realize what they're doing at the start of the next mission. Like, like your person who's talking was just like, man, it doesn't really feel good dropping all those chemicals on the forest. But I, I guess we have to fight communism somehow, right? And it's just like, okay, so this game kind of knows what it's doing. But at the same time, it could present it better than be like, drop Agent Orange on the forest. And it's just like, oh, my God. So just Shoot about the very protesters. Funny. It was one of those games where, like, I'm not going to stream it. But it was like, man, if we happened to cross this game and started playing it on a stream, it would be hilarious. Just the amount of, like 
badly phrased things they are letting you do in this game. That's wild. I need to go check that. I also got PlayStation Now uh, through that one quick deal, so I gotta go uh, download that and commit some war crimes because nothing better than war it's crimes. It's not a bad game. It's not I didn't a bad, sign I'm the Geneva Convention. I didn't sign it. I didn't sign it. Um, speaking of signing, Kyle, sign me with your furled finger. Uh, how's Elden Ring? Uh, I just crossed 100 hours last night. I did wow. four hours on stream, so it was wow. it was a lot. Um, I, I hit some really high highs and some very low lows, I will say. That game uh, has some of the best game design as far as bosses and, and like arena level design I've seen. And then some of the... I can't say it's the worst designed multiplayer. I don't enjoy the invasion aspect of I want to play co-op with someone and I get punished for that. I get that having someone along with you for co-op inherently makes the core game easier because you have another person you can rely on. So there is some offset to that. I get that. Yeah. But the fact that every five minutes, if you if you beat someone or you lose someone, you get basically like a five minute window between invasions and then all bets are off. They can just invade you uh, wherever you go. I am towards the end game. I'm I'm I think maybe I have like 15% of the game left before I actually do the final boss. And uh there's one level in the mountain snowy area where the where the giant is where there's a, a fort you need to defeat a boss at. And normally in Elden Ring, um I know that other Souls games are different, but in Elden Ring, which is the only Souls game I've played with any actual like commitment to uh, before the boss, there's a stake of Marika, which is basically like a checkpoint. So if you die to the boss, you can choose to go back to the stake of Marika, and it just sets you right outside the boss's arena. Or you can go back to the last grace you visited, which could be halfway across the map. It could be more than likely right next to the area where you need to go to beat the boss. Most people would choose the stake of Marika because it's close. You get the same effects as going to the grace. You get your health back. You get your items back, and you can just go and try again, and it's it's great. Yeah. For some reason, this actual boss with a health bar at the bottom, his name comes up. He's a great enemy that you have to fell. Uh, does not have a stake of Marka next to him, for, just for no reason. Instead, they put you about maybe like two hundred feet away from where he is. But in order to get to him, you have to you have to bypass several enemies take an elevator up and then go through his fog. So there's a whole thing you have to do. And we got invaded while we were trying to get to the elevator. And we actually pulled the lever to make the elevator come down. And who should be on the elevator coming down, but the guy who just invaded us. And he killed oh, yeah. me and my friend that we were, we were fighting with. I lost oh, yeah. 150,000 runes. Um, I, I did not appreciate the fact that for some reason that specific boss coincided with the fact that there's a no stake of marka and they spawned the invader where we needed to go normally he spawns just uh the, or he, he or she will spawn if they invade someone it's just in the general area but for some reason the game just decided to funnel him right there i don't appreciate the fact that that specific place was designed that way um and it really really frustrated me that we we both sort of lost a lot of uh like I, I lost a whole level that I could have leveled yeah. up right there just because I, I it takes like 130,000 runes for me to level up now. So uh, I was really pissed off. And then, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I had to make that run a few times. And uh, the first time I got there, I forget what happened. I That elevator, I like fell off next it to it. It glitches. It's, it's, a, it's a glitched elevator. And the... So, no, this is what I did. I activated it from the bottom first. Or no, I activated it from the top first. It starts at the bottom. So it's one of those elevators. If you encounter it at the yeah. bottom, you step on you it. You can't it, it, use it. it. Or, yeah, yeah, you can't use it. So I found it at the top. So I pulled the thing to bring the elevator up to me. Then I sent it back down. Because I always I have a habit in Souls games to send the elevator back every time I get off of it. Uh, that way, if I die and yeah. respawn, I don't have to call an elevator again. Um, so I I do that, go fight the boss, die, 
come back, run down to the elevator, and the elevator doesn't work because I never activated it the correct way. I just pulled the lever at the top to bring it up. So that first pissed me off. Yeah. And then I don't know if you listened to the episode, but that boss fight is the one I couldn't beat. And I got so pissed off, I finally summoned someone. And that's the guy who summo- immediately summoned, did the laser beam, and killed the boss before I even got a chance to hit them. And, I, and then I was pissed off yeah. that I didn't get to fight the boss. So um, that boss, yeah, he's, storied he, history. What, what kind of build are you uh, in, uh, with your character? Like, I'm are you mage sword, or magic or sword. philosopher or whatever? I have the Game of Thrones okay. sword. I so just I do. Oh, uh, okay. The George R. R. Martin sword. Um, I, I have uh, the Godskin Peeler, which is basically like a twin blade. So it's kind of like a double bladed oh, yeah, yeah, sword. Yeah. And um, I like, I like having the ability to sort of have a wide attack range so I can hit multiple enemies in front of me, or it's just a wider arced attack uh, area. That's sort of my play style. I don't really use magic other than healing stuff, or if I get poisoned, I have a little finger. Um, uh, I forget what it, the, the, you click the finger thing and you can use certain spells in your slots. Oh yeah. yeah. I, it's all like personalized spells. I don't really have any offensive stuff. Um, the only other thing I pour my attributes into was mind. And it was only so I could summon the black knife Tish summon, which is like one of the best summons in the entire game. Also mm-hmm. a ridiculous boss to fight um, as a melee person. There are certain bosses where it's just like, if you have magic, you just, you just completely demolish them. But if you're if you're sword and shield, it's it's way different. Um, and I'm this at least for this first run, I'm very sword and shield. So um, I I've had mainly a good time fighting what the game intends you to fight single player. And I've done sort of half and half, where half of them I've I've had assistance from my friend, and then the other half I just go off on my own for like eight hours or whatever. Um, normally not at one time. Sometimes eight hours. Uh, I should be working probably, but uh, it, it's 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 been good for that but the thing i have the issue with is other people invading my game i'm very specific when it comes to the type of games i enjoy and those tend to be very segmented from each other if i want to have a multiplayer experience i play a multiplayer game if i want to have a co-op experience i anticipate having just a co-op experience not one that's mixed with also a multiplayer experience so that's sort of been uh, a sticking point for me where i just really don't like the fact that I can get invaded at the worst possible times. If I'm if I'm in the overworld, that's fair game. Like you can invade me if you know yeah. I'm walking over a mountain with my friend and we get the invasion thing. It's like okay, fine, we can win or lose. That's fine. But if I'm in or near a boss area or in an underground cave or something like that, I don't want to be invaded because I've already invested time and effort to get to that, that spot. Whereas if it's in the overworld, it's like there's graces all over the place. But like you know, it, it doesn't really matter to me. But um, I really dislike certain aspects of the invasion multiplayer, uh, like the whole experience. I'd like the multiplayer experience as a whole, as far as co-op is concerned. I just don't like the invasion aspect. Yeah, I, I've, that's, I've, that's only, my sense. <laughs> I've only been invaded by the like the NPC invasions because I don't I, I don't summon people, so I don't ever have it on to be invaded. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's that's a that'll stop over time because people will stop playing the game but yeah i, I can see no, how they that, won't how annoying that is. <laughs> they, people it's, are definitely yeah, gonna stop playing this game it's gonna be there forever it's good uh i mean um, you know yeah i i yeah no. i mean it's the same thing what? like i was i was no. talking with my friend <laughs> no, i was talking wrong. with uh, people are always gonna be playing the, there's always gonna be enough of a player base for you to be invaded in this game i don't 100%. think well I don't, I don't i don't think i don't think five years on there's going to be enough of a player base to make it as consistent a bad right, experience that's what I mean. as i as i've been having i don't um, know i feel like i feel like if you go back and play dark souls 2 right now no no you're gonna get dark souls 3 yeah. maybe, not dark souls 2 nobody yeah. likes dark souls 2. or dark souls dark souls 1 you'll get invaded. dark souls 1 totally but you won't get invaded yeah. every single time you and it's also thing. it's also a different like when you when you beat bosses in the original Dark Souls games, that's when you get invaded is after you've beaten a boss. It's not when you're I don't I can't even really remember how co-op stuff works in those because, again, I haven't really played them. But uh, it's just a frustrating part of the game that I, I don't enjoy, even if I can understand why it's there for for purely for balancing uh, yeah. aspects. But just not my not my thing. But overall had a really good time with Elden Ring and and really 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 enjoying it way more than I thought I would. Nice. I'm I'm happy you're enjoying it. Yeah. 
Um, also, just two other mentions real quick. Uh, it was recently the 10 year anniversary of Journey, not the band. The uh, Damn. I think they've had their 10 year anniversary several decades ago. Um, and Journey is fantastic, made by that game company. Um, uh, oh, actually, uh, the music is a really big part of uh, Journey's whole emotional experience as you go through it. And I have somewhere i probably should have gotten this out but i i was at my parents house and didn't have time to get this but give me give me a minute we'll go find something i do like Journey. Well, what it's been you, a while uh, since i've since i've played it what have you been playing will um uh, i'll just touch on elden ring while he finds that uh i've been playing more elden ring i actually just found a um i found a new area that i didn't know existed in elden ring um anyways kyle's back with his vinyl yes signed Dang. by austin wintery um it's it's fantastic it's really really good it says kyle see you next time because it was at a convention i actually gave this to my friend because i couldn't make it to the convention so he doesn't know who i am and probably never will but he signed my name and uh cool yeah that's it's awesome very very it was a good soundtrack very fun yeah Ooh, I mean, see i always like when they do that I have a the um, the I have the Untitled Goose Game one, and it's like red, fiery. Oh, Probably. that's awesome! Uh, um, so Journey's man. very cool. It's on it's on PC. You should go play it. I think it was seven dollars when I bought it. It was it was real cheap. It's you can beat it in two hours. It's great. Um, Sorry, and then Black, I, I, what? What's I was up? just remembering Untitled Goose Game. Oh yeah, remember remember how like, like that, that was inexplicably big for about a month? And didn't it win <laughs> BAFTA's Game of the Year? I don't know. That game rocks. That so though. weird. Maybe it's I good. Don't, I, don't, I like that game. It's it's good. I just don't think people were flipping about. I, th I think the like about it the cuteness period. of it really the, the, yeah, for a while. The novelty and the 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 sort of nicheness of like why would. Yeah. This is such a Actually, this is such a gamey game. But it but it had it had a little bit of a Pokemon Go element to it where it was like people who don't play video it grabbed the attention of people who don't play video games in a way that they were like, "Oh, video games can be like this? I thought they were all shooters. I thought they were all sports games. I didn't realize you could have this little fun little thing." It's like, "Yeah, where the fuck have you been? Show some respect, <laughs> okay?" <laughs> it's not all cyberpunk. Yeah. Ugh. Um and yeah, I, I like that game. I still have it on my Switch. It's it's like a perfect yeah. Switch game. It is a perfect um, Switch game. Yeah, and it's then, fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's I don't I wouldn't ever call it anyone's game of the year, but it was certainly a good experience. Yeah. And a cute little a cute little fun game. Just play. one of those those weird little breakouts where you're like, What wait, why is this breaking out? You know, like like <laughs> Hello Neighbor. Like I remember telling you guys about how Hello Neighbor came out. You could kind of tell it was popular, but you weren't really sure why, and then my uh my mom gave my brother-in-law hello neighbor pajama pants and she didn't even realize it and i'm like what where'd you get this and she goes oh they were at walmart they were on sale and it's just like the type of thing where it's like how did a game like hello neighbor get so like popular and merchandised that people can just randomly buy things from it at walmart branded as such and it's also it's like a game so with stupid. vague That's overtones weird. of like pedophilia and like kidnapping children yeah. <laughs> and huge yeah. with kids yeah. yeah it was very weird that's wild anyways kyle your final game sir um, final game uh, i haven't played it in a while uh, well i i played it last week but i haven't played it as much as the other games which is black mesa the definitive edition uh it was on steam on sale for something i can't remember i bought it i played the original half-life when i was like very very young uh so i like vaguely remember how to play through most of the game and I'm having a really good time with it. I mean, it looks very pretty. It plays super smooth. Um, everything is top notch as far as uh, customizability, accessibility, uh, the ease of which, other than suffering through the loading screens, the loading sections of the Source engine, um, it's just really fun, smooth, good experience. The sound design, actually, I think that was one of the first things I, I realized was like a step above your average mm. sort of remake or remaster. The sound design in that is really good. Everything sounds very punchy, um, but also not too like ridiculous. It just feels good. It feels it feels right. Um, and I have not gotten to the Zen portion, which is the 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 new edition. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm very much looking forward to it. 
And uh, yeah, it's just a fun experience. I recommend picking it up and playing it, uh, even just for the novelty of playing an old or a new old game, uh, which is which is tends to be fun if it's done well. And Black Mesa definitely is. Nice. I want to try that. Um, I yeah. touched on Elden Ring quick. I realized I had missed an entire section of area, so I actually went back and took a right instead of a left, and now I have an entire area, and I beat the boss there, and I'm still exploring it. Um, I like I said, I'm using the Game of Thrones sword of swords. Uh, I'm very fond of heavy weapons. Mostly, like three hits from my sword will break poise break pretty much everyone. Mm. Uh, so that's, oh, that's super good. helpful. And then my one spell that I use is the three rocks, and then I throw them because oh, three the casts rock. of that will poise break pretty much anyone. Three, to, two to three. Uh, so I can just do that and then go up and stabby stab, and it's super helpful. And then the mimic just does all the work. Anyways, um, so that's been fun. Uh, I also have been playing Satisfactory. I started that. I was I was here. Uh, Karen was doing oh. Karen's 75 hours into Breath of the Wild, so I was letting her play Breath of the Wild. It's wild how far she is. She's doing everything. Um, so I was, like, drinking a little bit, pre-gaming for Kingdom Hearts, obviously. And I was like, what should I play? So I played some Satisfactory. Uh, and basically I'm at the point where I just want to go play Factorio, because I think Factorio is a better yeah. game. <laughs> Satisfactory's fun. I, like, we talked about this a little bit, and I want to be, at least in my opinion... It's very little to do with Satisfactory itself and more to do with 3D versus 2D. And for games like this, 2D just makes it so much easier to like plan out, place yeah. things, like understand and movement and all that. 3D just adds the extra dimension just makes it a lot more complicated and fiddly. Yeah. So I, like I said last week, I think it, it would be way better as like if Ian and I and a couple other people were like doing a Satisfactory server because uh, then people can go off and work on their own factories. Um like a big issue I have with satisfactory is it's like, there's not as much, there's too much math. Like I feel like yeah. in uh, factorio to an extent, you can split a bunch of stuff. You can shove things in the other things and it'll work out. But in satisfactory, like efficiency is the name of the game. So you have to like calculate this many uh, harvesters into this many things to make this correct amount because if you don't do the optimal amount of like rods to nails things get backed up and you actually end up producing less even though you're producing more in the long run feeding into yeah. it so it was just like this whole headache and I'm like in Factorio it's just a giant patch of iron I can throw a bunch of different things on and then move it all out of there versus this fill is the conveyor one belt one. Yeah. and go from there um, I and actually, yeah, just just to say, I feel like actually I think that's kind of the crux of the problem is that if you fill a conveyor belt, even the slowest conveyor belt in Factorio, it's a lot of items and it can feed right. a decent amount of machines. And I feel like in Satisfactory, if you fill a conveyor belt, it will feed maybe one machine. And so it's it one of those things where it's like awkwardly. you need. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those things where it's like once you fill the conveyor belt, it's not really as doing much as satisfactory. So you have to totally. build out sideways a lot more. And yeah, so it's like a little comp like frustrating in that way. The one thing I do like that satisfactory I think does well is I like the the there's like a space elevator and hub upgrades that you have to build mm -hmm. sp specific items to then feed into it to unlock new items. And I think. I like that system personally. I don't think it's a better system, but I think I like that system rather than making uh, fluids of research fluids and feeding them into research stations. Like I like having yeah. those mini goals along the way. Like if, if yeah. Factorio is like make a thousand cars and deliver them here. Like I, I think that would be more fun than Ooh, that's a good idea. I know yeah. it could be a whole stream series. Um, like, I think that's more fun. But uh, so basically the conclusion I've come to is I, I want to put Satisfactory on the shelf for like uh, Subpixel Ink or a sandbox because I think that would be fun because it really lends itself to like in, in, in Factory you do a lot of people do the main bus that everything feeds into it. But in Satisfactory, it's easier to make a here's an iron factory. Here's a nail factory. Here's a copper factory. Here's where all the power is produced. And here's a coal that factory that sends the coal here. Like mm -hmm. that's way easier to do because there's huge expansive distances where Factorio is manageable by one person and you don't have to go back to the hub to build things. You can just build 
everyone copy the factorial building system because it's better than everything else yeah. out there sorry i don't mean to lose my cool on this but factorio game of the century to be honest um yeah. finally here uh i uh have gotten the new lego star wars skywalker saga uh i played a little bit with karen um i did not pay for this game i want to be upfront about that uh so i've been playing that You're with welcome. her <laughs> ian bought it for me yeah <laughs> through yeah through work ian bought it for me um so we've been playing it. Karen did not know, uh, which is not uh, her fault. I think also a lot of people probably don't know this. It's a hundred. It's all nine movies, uh, but it's a hundred percent new content. It is not any of the old games remixed back into it. It is brand new levels, brand new areas, brand new characters, brand new. Like there's a galaxy you fly around, um, all this sort of stuff. Brand wow. new cutscenes, voice lines, all that sort of stuff. It is. 100% from the ground up new it is new combat all that sort of thing um so i i like i knew that to an extent but it's kind of wild to see it it's also wild that this game is it's almost the visual quality of the lego movies like you see like the wow. stickers and you see like the plastic imprint of where like the print mm -hmm. mold would be even on like the hair pieces and stuff so it, it and they do such a much better job of blending uh the lego stuff with the physical real life stuff that they don't model in lego like they do a, a much better job about that in this game and uh, uh across the board i think it's fantastic i've been really enjoying playing it we're a little ways through um uh phantom menace so you can start at phantom menace a new hope or i don't know why you would force awakens um so I'm probably going to play... Yeah, they shouldn't have included <laughs> yeah. those games at all. Um, really. Oh, the whole opening cutscene is about Ray, and I w wanted to oh. shoot someone. Uh, <laughs> God. Say her, say her full name, Ray Sorry. Skywalker. Yeah, Ray Solo. Um, <laughs> Ray Kenobi. Ray Kenobi. Anyways, that's what I've been playing. Uh, i got to play more LEGO Star Wars, uh, so I'll, I'll have more on it next week. Uh, and sorry, Analog Pocket, I still didn't get to you this week. I'll get to you next week promise i'll talk about you at some point um that's everything we've been playing which means it's time to move to the news section which means it's time to play the news theme which i'm going to do right now here's the news we're talking about news it's gaming news what's up news what's up news um guys I, this is yeah. far down on the list, but they almost made a Zardoz video game. God, what I I just saw this before we started. So, give me the lowdown. What type of game was this supposed to be? What's the what's what was the year? Come on, tell me everything about it. Uh, so this is late two thousands. There's so there's a pitch video here. Um, oh my! It was for yeah. It was by the, sorry. Uh, it was the Pyr pyramid of Patapon fame on board as developer um it's it, it so in this like little presentation they have sort of these um panels that like say what it's going to be so it was a zardas game that would have vocal command features uh yeah i just read that tom clancy's quote, end war quote use the xbox live's mic microphone to command all selected units speaking as zardas the head <laughs> so you're the head floating around and you would give commands through god that's it's like black and white almost that's so oh, you would use this. uh gun is good to exchange your grain for extra guns kill the brutals uh you can shout this command to have your various units attack the enemies and slay farmers <laughs> <laughs> command your troop to your capture and enslave the brutals and then force the you can grow grain by forcing the uh brutals to harvest your farmlands there is no penis uh gu penis is bad gun is good gun is bad penis is good is that what the line is i, I can't remember what it is um zardoz man i would I think i have it on blu-ray oh, it's a fantastic it's movie a good, i don't do you have it on because with i feel like when i tried to buy it a couple years ago it wasn't on blu-ray I, it was only on DVD because I have the DVD. You know what? I have Krull on Blu-ray. Um, but I, I was just honestly, Zardoz is a really it's a good movie. It's very weird, but in a good, unique way. I was just thinking the other day about the ending scene where it's just uh, where it's uh, Sean Connery and the female lead. And it's just like 
fading between them and like 10 years later they have kids 10 years later the kids are grown now they're old now the kids are there and it's just this weird like fading like little montage it's, ending and it was like so cool man what yeah. a great movie it's a fantastic movie Peter. Zardoz... sorry go ahead kyle uh, sorry it, it it's available on blu-ray you can get oh it they must have had it i don't think yeah cool. i i think i i have crawl on blu-ray which i've actually not seen um and then uh what's the other oh uh uh flash gordon that was the other movie i was thinking of. oh yeah Great let me movie. tell you something barbarella not worth watching it's not no good. it's not good no. you know i was gonna it's... rewatch commando the other day oh commando's good i, I need to rewatch shin godzilla good. shin you know, godzilla is so good i i was watching a streamer and someone donated the scene in shin godzilla where he's the little like gross aardvark thing crawling through the like the embryo crawling through the city <laughs> And the yeah. guy was like, is this real? And in my head, I'm like, oh, it's real, baby. And I kind of want to watch Shin Godzilla again, even though... I, I feel like my mistake was movie. you and Karen were visiting. We had a very busy day. It was the end of the day. And I was like, let's watch Shin Godzilla. And I feel like all we really wanted to do was just fall asleep. So yeah, Karen I feel went like to bed and I finished the movie. You should rewatch it. You really yeah, should. They become, they become a, a, a coalition at the end. Because, because it's... The people. It's a coalition invades Iraq. Yeah, yeah. it's a whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> ISIS was there. Uh, Osama bin Godzilla. Godzilla bin Laden. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, I feel like 9-11 was like the peak of American uh, humor. No. You remember when like Osama bin Bauman and like all the all the, all really the incredible freedom racism. Fries. Yeah, um, just the peak of American. I was humor. gonna say uh, it was something I noticed looking at like older uh, like film. I mean, it makes sense, but it's like so many of the films between 90s and like 2010s. Anytime it was war or anything was set obviously in Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq. But I was like thinking like there's that whole thing with like Transformers and they're like soldiers in Afghanistan or something. I was just like, yeah, yes, I remember I like, that now. It's such and they're a, in support of like the AC-130. Yeah, it's what like such stupid. a product of oh, its the time. Origi the original Transformers. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. like it's God. weird to think about this far removed. Like when it came out, it made sense, but it's like. It's like I don't know how to think. Like if that movie was made in the seven or yeah seventies, it would have had Vietnam Transformers in Vietnam, I guess. But yeah, it's like yeah. it's weird to think about. I mean, yeah, it's just it's funny you brought it's, that it's up because like, I was literally thinking like a, about that. Yeah, it's like it's like the real cultural version of what Watchmen was kind of making fun of when Doctor Manhattan is in Vietnam and Jeff yeah. Ford Nixon and just like blowing up all these peasants. It's like I'm not saying they're I'm not saying that they're influenced by it, but it's like the opposite of that where they're like, yeah, we should use our culture to promote the to promote the latest military efforts of our country, whether they're good or not. And it's yeah, like it's like oh my god. Because you think back to it, they could have been soldiers on a secret mission anywhere. Like you didn't have to do that. Yeah. But it, it, it's like in that moment it makes sense because it's what's happening. Uh, it's just, it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you bring that up because I was thinking about that. Uh, I, I'm going to make, I, I'm going to say something. I feel like this is true. I feel like more Americans have died in movies featuring the Afghan war than Americans have actually died in the Afghan war. Cause I believe the number is only like 2000 or something. It's very low. Probably <laughs> true. It, it wasn't. I'm they sure were there's saying, more, there's, there's more movies. Yeah. Than, Americans who, who died. have died yeah. in <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> wasn't there was something about yeah. how the I, I mean this is war talk now welcome here folks um the frogs uh though it was something about the russians had already lost more troops than they did in the entire it's Cold it's hard war to get valid numbers some? though oh that's true it's that's hard true. to get valid sure numbers but you're talking about the soviet the soviet invasion of Afghanistan. yes yes that's what 80s. it was which was their vietnam you know which was their uh that's uh metal gear solid five right Pretty sure. Yeah, that's when the U.S. teamed up with with Big uh, Boss, who wasn't really Big Boss. <laughs> no, I was gonna say when the U.S. teamed up with the Taliban and basically created the Taliban. Venom Snake. <laughs> um, sorry, oh, we're getting boy. so off anyways. track. I watched 1917. <laughs> that was really good. Um, anyways, Wait, let's not talk about it. I have thoughts on that movie. But I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I think it was a well shot movie because I like Roger Deakins. Um, I feel like I've already said it. I, I think that was the last movie I saw because didn't that come out? Wasn't that 2019 December? Yeah, I feel like it was yeah. right before pandemic. Right before yeah. pandemic. It was the last movie I saw before pandemic. 
Um, Return to Monkey Island, folks, it is 2022, Yay. not 1983, 92. Uh, there is a new Monkey Island game coming out, and there's also a new, uh, uh, why can't I think of it? Sierra game. Uh, a new what? God. The people who made Colossal Cave Adventure, they made all the Sierra games. They have a new game Dwarf coming Fortress. out as well. Um, oh, yes. The, uh, the the founders of Sierra. I, I can't remember. The King's name, Quest yeah. people. King's Quest, yeah. Uh, I um, So before you get into the details, I'm just going to jump ahead here. I've never really played Monkey Island, but this art style, it doesn't look Monkey Island enough. Am I crazy on that? I... Uh, so I've it almost... I've played a little bit of Monkey Island. This looks way more. Uh, it, it looks like a compromise between 3D Monkey Island and original Pixel Monkey Island. Uh, because yeah. if there's anything I have learned, it is point and click fans hate 3D. They do not want yes. 3D in their point and click game. And that that's fair. I just mean it looks a little bit too. It looks a little bit like too stylish. It almost looks like Ori and the Will of the Wisps in a way. Totally. Looking at that character. And I'm, again, very early indications. This is all we're seeing. But I'm almost like, no, just go back to the original art style. Do like, do like up 4K pixel art in a way. You know what I mean? Like you can still hit that original art style, just make it modern versus try and go with something new. So I, that's the only thing that makes me a little hesitant is I'm like, don't get, don't go broken age with it. You know, don't don't get so focused on trying a unique style when this is an established series. Just do that. I, I think people may agree with you because the top thing under this Devolver Digital tweet is someone else's art in the original art style. And it says expectations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which yeah is I've seen that too. a little bit rude, but you know what? OK, um, yeah, I've never touched Monkey Island outside of like booting it up and being like, hey, this DOS game runs. Um, I, I would love to play through them with a guide because uh, those feel like games that need a guide because uh, I don't have a funny hours. Yeah, that's the other thing I've always heard is they're, 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 they're genuinely pretty funny. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. It's, it's kind of wild. All these people are kind of coming back out of the woodwork. Like, I wonder if they made their games, went and lived life for a bit, and now they're like getting close to retirement or retired, and they're like, why don't we make games again? That's it's easy now and not easy, but it's easier now and we can do it at home. We don't have to work for a company. Um, let's just get the devolver digital people to do it. Sorry. I'm just looking at this. This is, this is by Ron Gilbert. It's Lucasfilm devolver. So this yeah. is not, this is not Microsoft at all. Was Microsoft part of the original ones? No, but who's the other guy that ended up doing Tim Broken Age Psycho? Yeah, he yeah. helped out. So that's that's why I'm, I I'm a little confused. So he's not on this then? No, it's a, it's by the original. I don't think Tim Schafer was on until Day of the Tentacle. Yeah, I I know he came in late. Yeah, but like I think yeah. he like kind of took up the mantle. But yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it's it's cool that people get to do what they want to do. Um, moving on here, Ian, you put this one here, the the Naughty Dog thing. I didn't even read it. Did you? Yeah, I just uh, there the 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 Last of Us two uh, multiplayer is probably going to be standalone. It's probably going to be free to play. Um, it's probably going to be more of a Tarkov Dark Zone type of thing where you are basically playing. It's not like PvP. Well, it's not like load into a match PvP. It is more like you yeah. are loading into a zone. You are playing Last of Us. You are trying to loot, but there are other players there that may or may not be hostile. It sounds kind of interesting. Um, I think just the caveat, I mean, I don't want to say the caveat, but the thing that really piqued my interest out of it is there's been all these rumors that Sony is trying to move more towards long-running software uh games as a service type stuff and have long-running games you know they acquired bungie because of the destiny uh experience uh they kind of pushed gran turismo 7 in that direction they've acquired some tech related to that they keep talking about it so this could be one of their first big triple a pushes into that space is a last of us games as a service long-running free-to-play type thing uh so just kind of early rumors on the direction that sony is turning 
Yeah, that's exciting. I, I liked. I haven't played Tarkov, but I liked Dark Zone in the original Division. Uh, so I, I think that it's it's like the it's like the RuneScape Wilderness. Like you go in with what you have, and you could lose all of it. Um, and you have to yeah. do a thing to get it out. So I, I like that. Um, moving on, uh, Remedy uh, announced <clears throat> with uh, agreement with Rockstar Games that they're going to remake, remaster Max Payne 1 and 2. Remake, not remaster. Remake. remake? I, I just didn't know from this headline. I, I I was actually thinking about playing Max Payne 1 and 2 again the other day. Uh, they are very good games. Somebody pointed it out on Twitter, and they're 100% right which is that Max Payne 1 is, like, ahead of its time. Like, it was very stylized. It was very artsy, very cool, like, semi-destructive environment, sound design, the slow-mo. It was doing so many things ahead of the curve that make that game a, a joy to play even today. And um, I'm excited to see Remedy come back and basically pick those properties back up and use the engine they used in Control to remake those games so i i'm excited uh they did say it's going to be one package so you, you you buy the game it's next gen consoles only i believe and pc it's on the control engine like i mentioned and you get max Payne one and two together with it i'm not, i'm happy about this it's kind of weird because i didn't realize that rockstar rockstar published max Payne one two and then they made three and published three I wasn't yeah. a big fan of three but it's, it's nice to see like an old publisher and the old dev come back together and say, hey, those old games, let's get together. Let's remake those. Uh, so I'm excited for this. You guys, you guys, Max Payne fans. I've never played a Max Payne. I've never, never played. Yeah, I've watched a lot of like reviews and, and sort of uh, YouTube videos looking back on the series as a whole. And it's, it's always looked really interesting and, and somewhat fun, but I never touched it. We should, uh, I mean, they're solid FPSs. You can probably blow through the campaign in like 10 hours on each. They're, I almost want to do like something on them now because they're, they're good. They're a lot yeah, of fun. I, I was, uh, when I saw this announcement, I was thinking, should I play through them now or should I wait for the remaster? Well, to be clear, again, remake, remake, sorry. remake. Sorry. This, this is an, a, this is a very early press release. This is them saying we have shaken hands. So this is basically pre, pre production. So these are three plus years out minimum. Okay, so maybe I'll yeah. uh, maybe I'll hit them then. I I, just, I think I might own them on GOG. Um, I'm not sure, but I would I'd be willing to stream like a first episode and kind of because it'd be nice to play that. And if you're there, uh, oh, you yeah. could that subway say level. Oh, um, God, yeah, it's so good. I'd be it's into so that. Good. Uh, next up here, the Lego Group and the Epic Games team. Uh, team. Epic Games have teamed up to build a place for kids to play in the metaverse, folks. The metaverse. What? God. I um I put this on here. This is basically Lego and Epic saying we're going to make a game together, but some of this wordage has me excited. Uh, quote, the Lego group and Epic Games today announced that they are entering a long term partnership to shape the future of the metaverse to make it safe for fun, safe and fun for children and families. The two companies will team up to build an immersive, creatively inspiring and engaging digital experience for kids of all ages to enjoy together. The family friendly digital experience will give kids access to tools that will empower them to be confident creators and deliver amazing play opportunities in a safe and positive space. All right, if you were following along and you had a little bingo cheat sheet, what does that tell you guys about this game? Let's list them off. What is this game going to be? Family friendly. Is it? Roblox. <sighs> it's going to have building yeah. crafting. It's going to be yeah. online, online only. It's going to be somewhat of a, like an MMO experience where there's going to be shared spaces. Uh, it's it's going to have um, future of the metaverse. So it's going to involve a lot of the different Lego properties. Folks, this is the new Lego MMO. This is the new Lego MMO. This is the new Lego universe, pretty much. And, and it makes sense. You wouldn't go back and make a traditional MMO. You would team up with the people who do Fortnite because they have a very good games as a service ongoing creative experience and they own the tools that are the best in the trade to do it so this is the new lego mmo they announced pretty much 
Uh, totally. I'm excited for you. There was something else they were saying. I don't know if it was in here. I can't seem to find it. About like it would be similar to like Roblox is you can make like a little Lego game that people can then play. Um, yeah, it totally could be that. I think was yeah. the thing. Like, like a dreams type of thing. Yeah. I will say that that Roblox editor so, for making games was very cool. Like the robust. amount of stuff you could do. Yeah. I thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know that metaverse is a term that has only recently been thrown around uh, beyond all recognition. I assumed metaverse stuff was purely in VR or like AR components. Is that no longer the case or is is it just a new word for digital universe? It's it's half and half. It's it's a buzzword. People are misusing it. I think so. The, so the short term is I don't it's typically associated with VR, but I think it has literally been bastardized so much that it it just means play space. Virtual play yeah. space. Okay. If 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 that's how it's changed, then that's okay. But I assumed from this announcement that they're teaming up to do some sort of VR experience or AR experience, and it would be limited to that. Um, yeah. So that's sort of so, what I was what I was thinking. I wasn't I wasn't anticipating like oh it's going to be like a Roblox thing. Um, but the, but so so I searched for virtual and they say it once. They say as the metaverse evolves, it is reshaping how people meet, will play, work, learn, and interact in a virtual three D world. So they're not saying VR, yeah, but but it's but it's on yeah, the edge but, because everybody keeps saying virtual metaverse. So I think it's I think it's a misuse of the buzzword. Is basically or the, or they're intentionally misusing it to try and broaden the term, and yeah, also probably more people are searching for multiverse than VR yeah, or whatever. I've seen so. like people use like I've seen people use metaverse in the sense of like we're creating a brand that's going to be a metaverse. Like people have referred to Marvel as a metaverse, where it's like you're just using that as a word Fuck to like off. include i yeah that's so that's the most infuriating part like, is like look the metaverse is stupid but there are like new ideas in the metaverse just barely in there so for you to take the fucking like cultural colossus that is crushing all creativity in the movie industry and call that the metaverse fuck off and die no they're not calling it the metaverse they're calling it a metaverse like a metaverse fuck off and die right. i still will <laughs> you know um, but also this Jesus. was bef this was before like Facebook changed to meta and called that a metaverse. Like this was years ago yeah. when metaverse was up first, like sort of buzzword. So it's like, I feel it, like it is such a cool word that is now dead for at least the next 50 years because it has been misappropriated and misused to the point where it is no longer, it no longer has yeah. a solid definition. I can see them choosing a different word going forward for things. Yeah. Um, uh, I did skip one here, um, which we don't have to go deep into it, but there's a great digital trends article where, uh, the writer talks to the, uh, one of the PS3, uh, emulator devs on why PS3 emulation oh, is so this. hard on PS5. And basically it boils down to the cell chip in the PS3, um, was able to take graphics post post, -post processing offloaded from the gpu to make it more powerful uh because the gpu and the ps3 was actually less powerful than the 360 but the reason they could achieve a lot of stuff is by offloading a lot of it to the crazy powerful cpu in the ps3 which is technically it surpasses the ps4 cpu uh in a lot of areas uh which is wild to think about um and they say basically replicating that system is possible like you can do that as evidence of the emulator, but it's something Sony probably just doesn't want to allocate resources to because they're afraid they won't make their money back. Um, yeah. So it's super interesting article we, over on Digital Trends. Uh, highly recommend it. It's it's interesting seeing this from someone else's perspective. Who knows what they're talking about, and they can talk about it, and they're not from Sony. Um, it's really neat. Yeah, I we someone brought this up the last time I was on local chat, I think, or we were talking about I th I think it was for uh the new PlayStation Plus. Like we were talking yeah. about whether or not there would be a streaming component and then I think you Ian or Will brought up the fact that PS3 games were you could only stream them. And I yeah. said, I was like I bet you it's because of the cell processor because it was if I mean I'm sure you guys remember but anyone who's watching doesn't remember when the PS3 came out 
uh, developers were like, how do we use this thing? Because it was kind of, it took, it took, Difficult. it took towards the end of the PS3's life cycle for developers to get like a full handle on just how to develop things that fit perfectly within the architecture that Sony had built. And um, I mean, the cell processor is like, it's still crazy what it can do. Um, but yeah, here I read through this article a little bit and the, the guy who uh, they interview is, is, basically hitting the nail on the head exactly right so it's a it's a crazy piece of hardware that is very difficult and unwieldy to this day but it's pretty interesting. yeah it's it's funny that like they made something so complicated they just don't want to deal with it anymore like yeah please <laughs> stop it's the um, problem child yeah fucking ps3 uh and final piece of news here uh square enix has trademarked tactics ogre reborn <laughs> In Japan, Tactics Ogre being a tactics game that originally came out on the Super Nintendo and is also on the Game Boy. Uh, mm-hmm. I've never played Tactics Ogre. I've never played a tactics game. I, uh, I've i never played it either. Um, I've heard good things about it. This news story is not on here because of Tactics Ogre. It's on here because Tactics Ogre Remake slash Remaster was on the GeForce Now leak list. It is another confirmation that that Ooh. huge list has some truth in it. So, like, I'm looking through it and um, uh, Chrono Cross remaster, Final Fantasy VII remake coming to PC, uh, all sorts of stuff on here. Street Fighter VI, the GTA 3 Vice City San Andreas remasters, all this stuff that has been leaked is slowly coming true. So I'm looking through this list and it's just like Final Fantasy IX remake. Final Fantasy Tactics Remaster probably coming. Gran Turismo 7 from Sony coming to the PC. Good chance of Returnal coming to the PC. Like, all this stuff. It's it's astounding. When this list first came out, it was like... I didn't really believe this list when it first came out, right? I, I feel like we talked about it. Yeah. Do you guys remember that? It was like... Yeah. Because it had so many people were saying, on it. It had so many things on it. Like, it has Kingdom Hearts 4. Like, it has all these crazy things in here that you're just like, this is never going to be true. And it was pulled from GeForce Now from a database. And so people were just like, it's probably just testers putting a whole bunch of fake games in a database. And I was like, yeah, that's probably what happens. Um, But the amount of stuff that's being confirmed on here is crazy. It's crazy. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, games are looking good for the next couple of years, even if only half of these end up being good. Yeah, that's wild. Um. So that's going to be it for the news, uh, which means it's time to end this thing, which means oh, I got to hit that button and turn the music off. Yay, music. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in here. Um, there was Double C in the chat. Also joined the Discord. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Um... This is local chat, uh, Subpixel uh, team, subpixelfilms.com, pursue straight to our YouTube channel. Subpixel team on all the socials and all that sort of junk, if you want to follow us there. Um, this is the first time this show has been on Twitch in quite a while. Uh, I think we did it once on Twitch before. Uh, we're going to switch over to here now because it's just easier and this is more of where our fan base is now. Uh, and then uh, I will upload the YouTube version uh, probably the next day and as well as the podcast version unless I do it after this, which I don't feel like doing. So I'll do it tomorrow. Um, Ian was here. Thanks for coming by, Ian. Hi. I want to try that Hi. Nebulous game. It's great. It sounds really fun. Um, Kyle was here. Don't Kyle, try, Don't try Kingdom Hearts 2. You don't need to. I, I don't need to. <laughs> I do want to try... Um, Black Mesa. I do need to finish Half-Life 1. I started that with Chris, uh, and I have never beaten Half-Life 1. Uh, Beat it. Good. I know. Good I should stuff. do that. I will do that. Folks, uh, Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern, Ian and I will be making some models, modeling on stream, so come check that out. I got some new clothes to model. It'll be great. Now we're building wooden ships and Death Stranding bikes and Gundam weapons, so please tune in for that, 12 p.m. Eastern Uh, And until then, we will see you all next week.